the new theater of the mind. With the Baron of Broadcasting. Welcome back to the Bruce Collins Show. We're very glad to have you join us. Tonight, we're going to be speaking to a person who is hiding behind the veil of anonymity with a false name because of an experience that she had last year. What makes her story so compelling? She's not revealing her real name and she's not seeking money or prestige by revealing the details of her experience. The Bruce Collins Show airs every Friday night at midnight right here at WWPR, 1490 AM. You can listen to past archives of The Bruce Collins Show at ipbn-fm.com. That's ipbn-fm.com. There's a banner just for The Bruce Collins Show on the Intrepid Paradigm Broadcasting Network website. Click on the show banner and you will go right to our page. We would appreciate it if you're able to spread the word for our show by word of mouth, social media, or in whatever creative way you can. Also, we have a Facebook page for The Bruce Collins Show. Please like us there. And you can email the show at bruce underscore collins underscore show at AOL.com. The Bruce Collins Show also has a YouTube channel. Visit YouTube, search for The Bruce Collins Show channel, Subscribe and catch all the latest shows on YouTube. Again, our guest this week is under the anonymity of a false name going by the name Violet UFO. We'll be talking to her about the unusual events and experiences going on in her life in a moment. Buckle your seatbelts, folks. phenomenon has been a very hot topic in the last several years. As a matter of fact, it's interesting how public opinion is changing. 20 years ago, uh, I sat in the break room of a company that I really didn't want to work for with about 10 people, and they were talking about the new movie, Fire in the Sky, which was the story of Travis Walton. And eight out of those 10 people thought the story was crazy, it was made up, It was phony, the guy was nuts, and all of that. And two people believed it was real. They they actually believed the encounter happened. Fast forward 20 years, and we could honestly say that the roles have been reversed. Probably eight of those people would believe that the UFO phenomenon is real, and maybe two of those people would not believe it. So we can say that the UFO phenomenon is more widely accepted than it was 20 years ago, but we may not understand it any more than we did back then. I'm very honored this week to welcome as a guest a person who goes by the name of Violet UFO. She's preserving her anonymity, and that is actually quite refreshing because most of the time when we have guests on this program who talk about UFOs, they generally want to generate fame for their research or they want to sell a book, they're speaking publicly somewhere, and all of that. Not that all of the intentions out there are, are negative or bad. It's just refreshing to, to welcome someone onto the program that has an honest perspective and has an honest story about what has happened to her. Now, I want to say that Violet UFO has a, an online program called Violet's UFO Diaries. And you can find that program at Vaughn. Live 
That's V A U G H N Von Live dot TV forward slash Violet Hybrid. And she's also on Facebook as Violet UFO. And I'll give you those details at the end of the interview. So if you missed it the first time around, go grab a pen and paper. Violet, welcome to the Bruce Collins Show. Thank you very much for having me, Bruce. Thanks. Well, it's great to have you on. Now, I've heard your your uh, your story, and it's quite compelling. So I want to go back to a year ago, and in trying to do my homework for this interview, I understand that you had an experience one night. Can you tell us what transpired? Um, yes. Um, last year, uh, during the summer, I had a very um, real dream that uh, I was standing on the back patio of my home, and I could not move my body, only my eyes. And I was looking up at a huge UFO craft. Um, I did feel that, uh, or did see through my side view vision that there was somebody smaller standing behind me. And I also remember having the thought in my head, uh, if anyone else is seeing this, uh, meaning the craft above because it was fairly low mm-hmm. and uh, bright and um, it's, the lights are quite bright, um, piercing white and blue colors. Um, next thing I know, I'm in the craft. Before you go on, let me ask you one thing. As you're standing yeah. outside, did it seem like it was the same time as what you were dreaming like for instance if you were dreaming at 2 a.m did it look like it was 2 a.m at night yes Mm -hmm. okay that's interesting yes it was dark out um it felt late uh so when i i don't know how i got into the craft Um, i don't have a memory of that i do remember standing in the window of the craft um looking out and still not being able to move only my eyes and I watched my home get farther and farther away. Mm-hmm. And did you see anything inside the craft? Um, yes, I did. Um, there were, um, well, I never saw any any uh, faces. I didn't see a head, body, or hands, anything like that, just bodies. Um, but I, there was a couple people. I don't know if you want to call it people. <laughs> <laughs> Walking behind me, um, there was another one at a chair, uh, and again, all I saw was just torso. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, when you said that they were there were people, and you kind of laughed, were they humanoid people, or did they look more like a, a classic alien gray? Yeah, and that's the part I don't know because I've never, um, you know, on my Facebook page, I have a drawing of that, and all I could draw is really just the torso area, mm-hmm. um, as I never saw a head, I never saw hands or legs, just just that torso area, and I do remember um, that they were wearing uh, a uniform um, that was very tight fitting, and it was gray, grayish blue. Hmm. It was dark. Yeah. Were, were there any insignias on the uniform? Not that I recall. I don't recall seeing anything like that. And the reason why I ask that is, are you familiar with Betty Andreasen's, I always pr- mispronounce her last name, but it's Andreasen, her story? I'm not, no. Okay, she was one of the early abductees or contactees years ago. I think it was after Betty and Barney Hill, but... She had Mm -hmm. a a widely publicized experience, and I was fortunate enough to interview her within the last couple of years. And she also says that the beings which uh, took her had uniforms on, but she saw a bird-like emblem on their uh, their uniforms. Okay. Yeah, I didn't get to see that because uh, there was no one really in front of me everything was just side vision um so i didn't really get to yeah. take a look and i yeah. couldn't move so i you know, i i couldn't try to look 
Right, exactly. What what were your feelings during this experience? Uh, you know, in the craft, I felt like I didn't have any feelings. I just watched the house go away, go get farther away. Um, but I definitely had some feelings before I got in there. Um, I felt a little anxious. Uh-huh. Um I remember my eyes were looking around at the other houses, um, my neighbor's home, trying to see if anybody else was seeing this. Um, I know I had that thought, and, you know, I had that thought. Yeah. You know, like, somebody has to be seeing this. This is too significant, and these lights are too bright. <laughs> right, exactly. So, it, you know, a, a lot of times when things happen, especially when they happen and you're not expecting it, I've noticed in my life, somebody will say, what happened? And it's like, I don't know. <laughs> you know, it just happened so fast. So yeah. w- were you processing this? Were you saying, I'm up in a UFO? You know, I'm up in a craft. I'm up, I'm seeing these beings. Was there any kind of processing going on? Or or it was just, this is happening around me and I, I don't know what to think. You know, I didn't have, a, I, as strange as it sounds, I didn't have any thoughts like that. I knew what I was looking at from my patio. Yeah. I, I, I obviously recognized what that was. Um, and as oddly as it sounds, I actually didn't have fear. I was, like I said, more anxious to know if anybody else was seeing this. Exactly. Now, are you familiar with John Mack's research? I am not. Okay. No. That's another interesting one. Uh, I think he's dead. And so I obviously wasn't able to inter- interview him. I think he died many years ago. But he did research early on. You know, the last 70 years, we've had uh, huge volumes of UFO and contactee experiences. So he was doing research, I think, back in the 70s. And one of the things he found was a lot of these um, abductions seem to be happening during the dream st- uh, state. For instance, mm-hmm. uh, a couple will be sleeping, and the, the spouse will, uh, you know, wake up at some point and go, you know, I was abducted and I, I had all these experiences, and the the man will look over and say, but you were laying there that whole time. So it's uh, it's interesting that it could be, I don't know if it's a physical phenomenon or if there's a way that these beings can pull people, you know, out of that that. Uh, dream state into their craft. I, I I don't really know. I've been looking into this with different people. Mm-hmm. So that's a great segue. What do you think as far as this, what do you think it was? Do you think it was a dream? Do you think you were recalling events? Or do you think maybe this actually happened, maybe not in a physical way, but maybe you were somehow transported um, you know, while you were sleeping? Um, well, I definitely feel like it, the event did happen. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I physically felt there. Yeah. Um, I, I did. Um, you know, for me to have that thought, you know, to be able to have that thought about my neighbors and to feel the anxiety, um, yeah, that did make it feel like I was physically there. So technically, you don't think you actually dreamed it. You think at some point you were maybe in a trance or or awakened somehow and then brought on the craft. I believe so, yeah. Okay, that's interesting, yeah. Now, um, that night before you went to sleep, w- was there any kind of a, a thought that Maybe this was going to happen. Did you do you do you even remember how you felt? Did did you feel different before you went to sleep? I don't recall feeling different. Um, I never had, you know, I've never thought about these things prior to this event. So, you know, it's not anything I waited for or thought about. Yeah. I didn't see anything unusual going on in my house at that time. It was just a completely normal evening. When did you recall all of this? That this had was it the next morning you woke up and you were like, "What just happened?" Actually, I woke up um, semi-startled. Actually, yeah. like I woke up, like I, 
um, I, I grabbed, I look up, uh, you know, my blankets, I remember, and I, and I just got up and I looked around to see where I was. And so I remembered it immediately. Yeah. yeah. And so then that set you on a course, didn't it? Um, you know, <laughs> it, it, I thought about it for a couple of days, and I just wrote it off as I was dreaming. I just had a really crazy dream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, it wasn't until I, I met um, a researcher, um, you know, because I just was doing some very, again, not a topic I thought about, but I was flipping the channels and I saw some TV shows based on this type of stuff and I started doing a little bit of research and um, I talked with a researcher who came to my house because I thought, well, maybe I want to do that. And because, uh, you know, prior to that, I had seen U- UFOs. And um, I thought this would be interesting and shared my experience of that dream. And, you know, in her opinion, based off of her many years of research, uh, you know, she said that uh, that sounded like a, an abduction case. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, and that's what makes your story so compelling because you weren't one of these people that was like into UFOs and and listening to Coast to Coast AM, I gathered, and all of that, right? No, not at all. Wow, that's no. interesting. Very compelling. Now, so you you just touched on this. So other than this dream, did you have any prior experiences like seeing lights in the sky and stuff like that? Yes, um, that started in uh, 93. Mm. Um, I just started noticing the things in the sky that I had never noticed before. Um, uh, well, I had shared, you know, before uh, in 93, though, I did have a, you know, a really bad accident and, uh, just from what I've learned, um, you know, I, I did have a, a near-death experience, which I had remembered three months after. Yeah. Um, that 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 could be common. Uh, you know, the, I don't know if it's um, the brain opens up more. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I just know at, after that event. I started seeing lights in the sky so you, quite often. Yeah, <laughs> and that's that's an important um, fork in the road, no pun intended, this this motorcycle yeah. accident. Um, did you have a uh, an, an out-of-body experience, in, or a new, can you explain the near-death experience, what actually was involved in that? Um, yes, I, re- I, I recall... Um, seeing myself uh, laying in the street and there was a group of people around me and I was receiving CPR. Um, I wasn't, I could tell I was elevated slightly, but not too much. Mm -hmm. And um, in the background of that, I did see a lot of emergency vehicles. Um, I couldn't hear anything. I could just only see what was, what was happening. Fascinating. So, uh, and I also understand going back even before that, even though you you didn't see craft or see lights in the sky till ninety three, but when you were young, there was actually missing time there, wasn't there? Yes, um, my mother shared with me um, some some years back that uh, on the beach on the beach of California. Southern California. Um, on, it was a Fourth of July night. Um, she was out there with lots of friends, and I was there. I was two and a half years old, and um, I went missing for about thirty or forty minutes, and no one could find me. I was nowhere to be found. Um, so her friends and the police were looking for me, 
And somehow I recall, I still have a memory of actually showing up on the beach hmm. and walking, uh, trying to find someone who knew me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, but, uh, I don't recall what happened. I don't know how I left or where I went. In looking at some of these UFO stories, um, one of the things that I find interesting is there is some kind of weird tie-in to the military. And I don't know what it is, but I've interviewed several people that talk about UFO flaps and they're near military bases. And um, do you think this in any way, and you and I share a common city when we were younger. We don't necessarily have to name that tonight, but uh, we both lived in the same city, it turns out. Um, and there's a prominent Air Force base there. Do you mm-hmm. think maybe any of this has to do with the military? And and, and it, not only that, but also when you look at Betty and Barney Hill, I believe Barney Hill was connected to the military. There's a lot of weird um, uh, converging paths along some of these stories that have to do with the military. I don't have an answer for that, but what's your opinion? I think it could be. Um I, I, my stepfather was actually in the military. Huh. Um, so I've been around the military for many years. Um, when I spoke with my mother about these events, um, she thought it was military. Wow. I don't know why she said that, and I wish I would have asked her. But, uh, yeah, she, she, that's what her opinion was of that. Um, huh. so yes, I do. I, I do think part of it could be. And that even ties into Hollywood because I often wonder sometimes what Hollywood is doing and what kind, why the UFO message is so prominent there and half of the message is aliens are bad. The other half is aliens are a comedy routine. So I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, that's just my problem I'll have to deal with. <laughs> now, um, I, I know in past interviews you've talked about um, at certain times in your life uh, you felt like a loner, and that's not unique. Many people, you know, feel that way at different times in their life. Do you think this was tied into the UFO phenomena, though? Um, that's that's one of the things that I'm really trying to figure out. Um, I have, you know, I have been like that since I was a very young child. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if it's, you know, I'm. I don't know. I don't fit in with everyone else. <laughs> yeah. I do I do know that about myself. I, whether it's related, I don't know. Um, that's one of the things I'm still trying to research and figure out. I mean, yeah. I've, and that, and that's, as you know, I've only been at this thing for a year. <laughs> right. And that's an important point to make, and that's really why you're out there, isn't it? Because you're trying to find out just what is going on, Right. Absolutely. That's why I made the Facebook page. Um, I was trying to connect with people who could give me some more information and possibly be helpful. Given your perspective that you've been doing this for a year, are you disappointed in what we would call, quote unquote, UFO research? The guys that are getting paid to, who claim that they're researchers, by and large, they're pretty much just actors in, in, on a Hollywood reality show. Uh, what's your opinion now that you've had a year to kind of look at the whole UFO movement? Is, is it a mess? <laughs> <laughs> um, well... What I found is that um, a lot of the old cases are being talked about quite a bit. Yeah. And, you know, in my opinion, um, you know, those are old. You know, the research has been done. Mm-hmm. And they're just keep, you know, they keep grinding those cases. And I really don't feel like they know any more than I would. Yeah, exactly. I that, mean, that- that's a, I would like to see something different that way. Yeah. That's always been a question I've had for some of these researchers when I've had them on is, are we really any closer? I mean, like I said at the at the opening, it seems like society is accepting this more, but it doesn't seem like we know any more than we did when Travis Walton's movie came out 20 years ago. So I, it almost seems like we're going around in circles. 
getting back to your story, though, uh, you've had incidences of sleep paralysis. Can you talk mm-hmm. about that? Um, yes, I have had... Um I've had one incident. Actually, I really haven't talked about this one that much, but um, I remember I woke up when I was being put back into my bed. Wow. Um, I was actually, I would have would have been flat, you know, laying. When I put down, I would have been flat on my back. Mm-hmm. But I remember waking up, and I never saw who was in my room. Um, I just remember waking up, and I was about to lift my head, to see and you know I could see that I'm not on my bed but I'm getting there and no sooner than I lifted my head I was out again and um, you know every time this happens though I have to note that I wake up very late Uh Um, usually I only need about five hours of sleep so when something like this happens I wake up Anywhere from you know, seven to eight hours or more later. Huh. Um, another incident was uh, not that long ago, actually, when I, I woke up to loud noises in my house, and uh, it was quite late. <laughs> yeah. So there, that shouldn't have been, and uh, I, I can't really make out what the noises were. I just heard noise and. Um, I, I woke up and was looking around, and I knew I couldn't move again. And I looked to the right of my bed, my bedroom, and um, there was a black figure there standing. Um, it looked like a man. I, mean, I didn't see the face, but just the, the body, the shape of the body. It looked like a man in a suit. Um, and what was distinctive about him was that he was wearing a hat. Yeah. And uh, that frightened me. Yeah. Greatly. Um, huh. Somebody listening mm-hmm. to this that maybe is not familiar with that kind of phenomenon would say, what? You know, a figure with a hat on. But there are a yeah. lot of stories about shadow people. And one of the well-known uh, figures that is seen is a figure with a hat on. Mm-hmm. So that, yep. that, is, um, that is fascinating. Now, when Now, when you saw this, again... You weren't into shadow people or anything like that, right? Uh, no, I didn't even know anything about that. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. I can't even imagine meeting somebody saying, I'm, I'm into <laughs> shadow people, but uh, they're probably out there. They're probably listening to this show. Uh, but <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that that is pretty frightening. Um, and you recalled this the next morning, is that right? I did. Um, I actually... Uh, yeah, I took a look at that figure twice. I was able to see that figure twice just to make sure I just wasn't seeing things. Wow. Um, you know, and then from there, I had, um, I don't know what was going on or who else was in the room because all I saw was that person. Um, but I was laying on my back and uh, my feet, both of my feet at the same time, <laughs> uh, had this burning sensation go through my feet. Wow. And this shadow person didn't try to communicate with you or say anything? Or, you know. No, no. It was very creepy. Just standing there. Wow. What about the... I, I don't believe... I, I believe the answer is no, but I'm going to ask it anyway. The mm-hmm. the quote-unquote dream that you had, whether you know real or you were recalling something, there were no there was no communication either, I take it, in that experience? There was not. Okay. No. I mean, oddly enough, it really, um, you know, after looking into this topic for some time, people talk about all these things that happened to them or it's just, you know, uh, but me standing in a window, it just didn't seem like, in my opinion, when I look back on it now that, um, you know, and then you have people who are beings walking behind you kind of just casually, I didn't feel like an, like it was an emergency. <laughs> right, right, exactly. And a lot of times you'll hear stories of people who have uh, experiences with the aliens, we'll call them aliens and UFOs, um, these beings, they, they have these experiences and then their children will be visited or abducted. 
have you ever gone back in your family and is do you know if there's any kind of a history where other people have been abducted? Um, well, I actually haven't really opened up to anyone about my experiences except for my mother because she's the one that shared the, you know, the time, uh, the missing time. Right. Um, uh, all I do know is that, um, well, I take that back. I did share last year with my uncle. He actually went with me to go see Travis Walton speak. Huh. And um, he shared with me that he actually uh, believed in those things and that he had seen a UFO on the same beach that I went missing on. You know, this may compromise you, and if it does, don't answer it. But Nick Redfern has a new book out, and I, I have to disclose this. I'm RH negative. It's true. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm a hybrid. No, but uh, I don't know what I am, actually. I, I think I'm human. <laughs> Given that, does that story at all resonate with you? Um, it does, because I'm also negative. Okay. I didn't know how to ask that directly. Yeah. I, yeah no, I am. Um, and, uh, yeah, he actually sent me that book recently. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to reading it. Yeah, that, that's that's an interesting tie-in. So uh, you you said that you only sleep regularly five hours per night. Mm-hmm. Now, do, you, do you in any way think that has to do with all of these experiences? You know, I've been like that for many years. Um, from a young child, I've never really needed a lot of sleep. I'm not really sure why that is. Hmm. Um but I think I feel good as anybody else having a full night's sleep. You know, they say get that, you know, get those eight hours. Yeah. <laughs> I'm. That's how I feel after five hour, okay, five so hours sleep. The public perception would be she only gets five hours of sleep. She's got to be sick all the time. You're never <laughs> sick, I, though. I'm never sick. I'm wow. never sick. Um, I, I have been around contagious people. I have, you know... Um, I've gone many years without going to the doctors. Um, you know, I don't even get a co- I don't even get a cold. Yeah. Wow. I do. So we got to ask because all of these things are somewhat unique. So do you think in any way that you are? I mean, you feel like a loner. You uh, you're never sick. You only sleep five hours a night. You've had all of these interesting experiences uh do you think you could be a hybrid well i don't know um you know i i threw that idea back and forth you know, honestly i didn't even know what that was until christmas of last year uh, <laughs> yeah yeah i had no idea what that was and uh someone explained it to me and i thought eh, okay well maybe just maybe, um, and then when um, you know I, you know the picture I have online. When I saw that, I started thinking about it further uh, with the eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I started thinking about that in a little bit more serious uh, tone because um, you know it was so unusual, and that wasn't the only one that's so unusual. It's just the only one I've posted. Explain that picture. It was a picture of your eye. Yeah. What, were, what are you showing in that picture? Yeah, that picture, um, you know, uh, I was just, it, it was at nighttime. Um, I was in my room and I was going to just snap a selfie. And I somehow messed up and didn't get my full face. But, you know, you go back and you check at it and you look at it. And um, my eyes... <sighs> They were shaped differently, um, and I blew that picture up to look at it and wasn't really sure what I was looking at, and uh, the eye that was seen in the picture, it looks like a cat eye. Hmm. That's the only way I could describe it. And again, we should remind our listeners that uh, Violet is on Facebook, Violet UFO, and uh, also she does a program online, Violet's UFO Diaries, and you can find out more information about that at vonlive.tv forward slash violet hybrid. And again, we'll mention that at the end of the program. Uh, now, 
Since you had that dream a year ago, have you had any UFO or alien contact? Everything has been, it feels so indirect. Um, the, one of the frustrating things is that I want to see, I want to see who is, who is taking me. I want to know where I'm going yeah. and I want to know why. Right. And everything see, feels so indirect. Like I can't see anything. You know, everything is very limited. And that's yeah. really the frustrating part of it all. And another thing I understand as if your life isn't different enough, now you're having apocalyptic dreams. Can you talk about those? What what kind of uh, experiences are you seeing in these dreams? Yes, those actually happened before the abduction. Oh. And those, yes, those were happening in like 2005 or so. They were going on for a couple of years. And... Um, I was having dreams of events that were happening or were going to happen. Um, for instance, um, I had a dream that there was going to be a helicopter crash in the Grand Canyon. And um, I think it was the next day or two later, you know, I turned on the news, and sure enough, there was a crash in the Grand Canyon. Wow. Yep. Um, I've had other ones where I, you know, I, I wake up, um, in my dream or, you know, is, uh, again, I don't know, um, where I'm in a situation where I am having to make a decision, life or death situations, like as in a battle. Um, then I have another one that is a re- that was a frequent reoccurring g- dream where I was um, running through what looked like um, maybe an apocalypse. Yeah. Self, you know, uh, I just remember, you know, there was destruction, fire, and, um, I'm running, you know, I have a, I have a child with me, and I have arsenal on my back. And I'm just running. No kind of, a, I guess, a date in any of these experiences? Um, no. No date. Hmm. No. Nope. I felt that one, that reoccurring one, I almost felt like that one was like um, something that's going to happen in the future. Yeah. And I know this is hard. I'm, I'm asking you these questions and it's like, I don't know. I'm, ju- I'm trying to figure out what all this is. But, but I'm trying to see if you get a sense because... It's interesting. A couple of years ago, I'll just make this quick sidebar. I in, I interviewed a doctor, and he said, um, he said, Bruce, what do you think is the average? And he was talking about how bad medical services. He said, what do you think is the average time that a doctor diagnoses your problem when you go in to see him? And I said, oh, five minutes. And he said, no, on average, it's 16 seconds. He said, they get you in the door, out the door, they've got the next patient. And he said, sometimes they misdiagnose people because the person says, I, you know, I have a stomach ache. And he says, here, take this. And he didn't express all the other things. This guy said, you know, if the doctor would let you talk for two minutes, you would pretty much at the end of two minutes self diagnose yourself. I don't. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if that's grammatically <laughs> correct. Self-diagnose yourself, but anyways, you would get to the point where you would kind of go, "Oh, maybe that's what my problem is." So I'm sure you've thought about this a lot. What do you think about these apocalyptic dreams? Do you think first do they tie into the whole UFO uh, experiences that you've been having? And if so, what do you think that could be? Well. I do think it's I, I do think it's tied in somehow. Mm-hmm. Um, based on based on um, based on the things that I have researched, um, I would say that it's preparation for something. Yeah. You know, and because I've again going back to childhood, you know, I've always kind of been isolated from everybody else. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if that's on purpose now that I look at things, um, but I've always um, taken care of myself. 
And um, so I think so. I, I think I, even though I would never hurt a soul, yeah. uh, you know, I think that it's preparation for something, and I just don't know what. <laughs> I really don't. And also, I understand in in the course of your life, I don't know if it's been lately or over 20 years or, or all of your life, but you mm-hmm. oftentimes see the same numbers over and over again, correct? I do. I do, yes. Um, I And that was about the time that I was having the dreams, too. Um, I would see seven threes, um, sometimes I would see the number, like on a clock, it would say one, two, three, four. I mean, they're not the same, but, right. you know, there's just that pattern there. Um, but, I mean, you, so one day you'd wake up, it's Tuesday, and you'd go, um, there's a three on that door right there, and then I'd walk over here, and there's a three, and somebody hands me a piece of paper, and there's a three on That kind of a thing where it's a reoccurring three Something um, like well, if I see a digital clock, it'll say three, 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 you know, oh, I see. Okay. I got you. Three thirty three. Yeah. Or if I notice, uh, I notice, uh, an address somewhere I'm driving, um, it'll be the same numbers that type. Yeah. They're never separate. They're always together. Do you, do you have any ideas about how this would fit in? Is it a message? I, you know, um, I really don't know about that. I do find it. I do find it odd, um, and I know that there's a you know a lot to say, a lot of opinions out there about the reoccurring numbers. But I really, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's so many factors I'm trying to figure out still, and there and there's so many of them. Wow, <laughs> this is heavy duty. Now, uh, before we go, I wanna I wanted to um, remind our listeners that you have a program online called Violet's mm-hmm. UFO Diaries, and it's at Vaughn Live. Again, that's V-A-U-G-H-N, vaughnlive.tv, forward slash Violet Hybrid. And that's like one word, Violet Hybrid, together. Now, yeah. on this program, what what can people um, view or experience through this v- video program? Um, well, I made that, actually, because... Um, I thought that, again, you know, um, I'm learning as I go about yeah. this topic and I wanted to talk to people who were interested in this topic. And uh, so I do the show, um, every Thursday and I usually try to pick a topic or two that I want to talk about. And so if people come into the chat room and, I talk to them through video and, you know, they chat with me or I'll take a Skype call. And, um, I just feel like because this is, has, especially this past year has just dramatically changed so many things in my life that, yeah. um, I want to talk about it and I want to get other people talking about it too. Yeah. Um, because I do, it's very, I do feel it's very real mm-hmm. and, um, I want to get that message out there, and I want people to talk about it. And have you been able to connect with people who have uh, eerily similar stories? Um, a couple, yes. yeah. Yes. Um, you know, the, um, the, the only thing I ever knew about this whole topic was through the Fire in the Sky movie, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah. And then I never really gave it any thought again. <laughs> um, but this, um, out of all the people I've ever met, um, Travis was probably the one that I connected with the the most. Yeah. Um, regarding this topic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of the things that he's, you know, put out there and shared, it looks very familiar to me. Yeah. Yeah, that it's interesting that I mentioned that movie then. <laughs> but um yeah. but yeah, I've I've communicated with him before. I've never interviewed him, but we've exchanged a lot of emails over time and uh I th- I think he he absolutely experienced what he says he experienced and I think he's sincere about it. Um here's an interesting question and these are some old researchers. One is a gentleman by the name of John Keel. Are you familiar with that name? 
I've heard his name. Yeah. His last name. Mm-hmm. Well, Richard Gere, pl- I think they changed the name, but Richard Gere played him in the Mothman prophecies. So John Keel was uh, an an old time researcher into the Mothman. He and he did a lot of other phenomena. He looked into UFOs. And Point Pleasant, where this story was set with the whole Mothman prophecies, had UFO phenomenon, it had Mothmen, it had Bigfoot sightings, all of that stuff. And um, there's other researchers like Jacques Vallée. Jacques Vallée was was an old-time UFO researcher, well-respected. And all of them tended to believe that these beings were somehow all connected and they could all kind of do the same stuff, where, in other words, um, aliens seem to be able to levitate, they seem to be able to project thoughts, they seem to be able to go through matter, uh, according to what some people say. And a lot of these other beings do, too. Do you think that your shadow man, in other words, was somehow connected to the UFO phenomenon that you experienced? I would think so, yes. Absolutely. Um, again, based on all my research the, this past year, um, I would definitely say so. Yeah, it's fascinating. Well, I mean, I hope to have you back sometime because this this topic is just, uh, it's never going away. I think it's always going to be in the in the forefront, and a lot of people have a lot of different opinions and a lot of thoughts about it. And uh, again, I want to remind the listeners, Violet's on Facebook. Go to, uh, you can find her as Violet UFO. And she also does a program called Violet's UFO Diaries, www.vonlive.tv forward slash Violet Hybrid. Check it out, vonlive.tv forward slash Violet Hybrid. Violet, thank you so much for joining us this week. Yes, thank you, Bruce, for inviting me, and, you know, thank you just, you know, doing what you're doing. That's, you know, it's it's great. It's great. I want to thank my guest this week, Violet UFO. In about a month, we're going to be welcoming back Joe Jordan. Joe Jordan is a man who has been researching the UFO phenomenon, and he is also a man that MUFON would like to forget. But Joe Jordan believes that he can blow the lid off of the entire UFO phenomenon based on his research. So I hope you can join us in November for the interview with Joe Jordan as he talks about the UFO phenomenon and how he knows of dozens if not hundreds of people who have been able to stop the abduction phenomenon. Please join us for that episode. Years ago, I earned a Ph.D., permanent head damage. The Bruce Cullen Show, daring to take radio past the point of no return. Cullen, start your engine. The new theater of the mind. With the Baron of Broadcasting. Bruce Collins and Chad Miles.
The Bruce Collins Show. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bruce Collins at the Bruce Collins Show. Thank you so much for joining us each and every week, Fridays at midnight on WWPR 1490 AM. We would ask that you would support all of your favorite charities that help to spread the gospel, clothe the needy, and feed the hungry. You can do that as thanks for listening to our program. We ask of no monetary payback from you, only your listenership and your dedication to making the world a better place. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you enjoy the show. Warning, warning, Bruce Collins Show. Don't try this at home. All right, folks, that's right. It's Brett Bigschwag Wagner, the host of Speed Channel's Pastime. And listen, when I need advice on life or anything else that's out there that's bothering me, I listen to the Bruce Collins Show. Why aren't you? Once upon a time, there lived a young boy named Bruce. What happened to that young boy? He became a major headache. Theater of the Mind. Thank you so much for joining us here at the Bruce Collins Show, where you can find us every Friday night at midnight here at WWPR, 1490 AM. Remember, God loves you. We do, too. Don't give up. <laughs> 